Welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Brian Pierce, CEO of CodeLogic. Brian, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be on the show, Swap. Uh, this is the first time you and I are talking to each other. So I would love to know a bit about the company itself. So talk about the company, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, great company started, uh, you know, a, a few years ago to build, a, a, you know, an unparalleled platform uh, using newer technology to help developers uh, be more productive, uh, be able to develop software uh, without uh, breaking it, <laughs> having uh, an understanding of uh, of what their software structure is. So when they make changes, they don't break it. Um, and the company's uh, been around for about almost three years, uh, but just now we're, we're really launching the platform. When you say that, you know, to help developers, uh, first of all, the definition, not definition, but the role of developers it has also kind of evolved over time, especially if you look at the cloud native world. Uh, developer's job doesn't just end with, hey, write the application and you're done. A developer has also become the operator. A developer has also become the security uh, folk. Uh, so when you, uh, and also uh, things are so complicated in especially cloud native world. So when you talk about making a developer's life easy, so, so talk about which expect and how do you, help them, then we'll also get into the platform as well. But I want to understand that what is the area of focus for CodeLogic? Yeah, sure. I mean, the whole reason we designed this soft, continuous software uh, intelligence platform uh, was today there's a problem, just as you mentioned, very complex software development, uh, microservices making it even more complex. Developers are just sometimes scared to go in and make changes because they don't understand what they're going to break. Uh, and what CodeLogic has done using unparalleled kind of newer technology around graph database, things like that, is we go in and actually scan the binaries of post-compiled files and also see what's happening with the application when it's actually running. And we use all that along with connecting to the database to see how the APIs and methods and the data is all connecting. What are all the dependencies? And I think what makes us really different is scanning those binaries because as you know, many of the dependencies are actually created when you compile the code. Many things happen with dynamically generated SQL commands, for instance, while the application is running that create dependencies that are just unknown from scanning basic source code, which is probably the most prolific way that people look for dependencies today. Talk about the the platform that you are announcing. And also, uh, you said continuous software intelligence. Uh, can you talk about how different is this approach from the CI and CD approach? Uh, where does this fit into the picture? Yeah, sure. Well, what I mean by continuous software intelligence is a couple of things. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, is just that the, the, the profiling of binaries and at runtime. But I think just as important is our working inside the IDE where the developer works every single day and being able to pop in to CodeLogic from their IDE plugin and see where all the dependencies are uh, immediately before they make the change and have some confidence that when they make the change, what all is that gonna touch in the structure of their code? What might they break? How much proactive should they be in working with colleagues to ensure that the changes that they make aren't gonna break the code. Um, CodeLogic is also as a platform fully API enabled to fit into the whole CI, CD DevOps space, right? We even do that in our own development team. Every time the code is checked in and there's a, and there's a build, the code gets scanned again to see what has changed in the code. And I think this brings a whole new enlightenment to the developer. Excellent. And what kind of developers are you targeting with uh, this platform? Today, we're targeting developers and development teams that are dealing with uh, Java code, they're dealing with .NET uh, and SQL databases. Uh, that's, that's where we started. That's where we chose to dig in. Uh, there is so much legacy code written in Java and .NET. A lot of people are really trying to, how do, how do I cloudify my application? How do I break it up into microservices? Uh, and when I do that, can I break it apart? Can I refactor it? or do I have to just rewrite everything? And you really don't know that unless you understand the structure of the entire application. And that's what we do. 
Excellent. And when I was listening to you when you're talking about, you know, uh, the developers not big things uh, and also other team members, uh, in development, uh, developers team, there is a couple of things. One is the technical debt that you can incur, especially when you are dealing with open source software or, you know, if you're writing a lot of code internally. Second is also tribal knowledge when folks work on a specific project and that they, those members may move out. So how does, you know, uh, you know, continuous software intelligence kind of also solves that problem so that organizations don't really have to worry about team members moving around? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, great, great question. I think that with code logic, when we take a picture, a snapshot through profiling the application of the dependencies, we see a lot of things. We have a, uh, an impact analysis that we do, which basically tells you how complex your application is. It's an algorithm written by CodeLogic. But in terms of technical debt, you might see in an application, we, we highlight maybe classes or methods that are overused or that have been extended way beyond the acceptable boundaries of how complex that you make them. So from a technical debt perspective, you know, we illuminate a lot of the potential problems that could be in the code, but that's not our main, that's not our main use case, right? As I said earlier, our main use case stemmed from helping a developer not break something, but there are many use cases that really fork off of that, including ramping developers, documenting code and keeping it documented in terms of how the APIs and the methods connect to the database. One of our, in fact, one of our recent deals was exactly that. They were bringing on a lot of new developers. They actually wanted to train their developers and felt they could ramp the developers on the application better if they were able to see the entire structure of the application graphically. Are there other tools similar to uh, what you folks are doing in the market? And if yes, what edge do you have? Or, you know, if I may ask, why developers should, you know, look at Code Logic's platform? What value do you bring to them? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, there, there is no commercially available uh, product that competes directly with Code Logic. And the reason I say that, companies today have to use multiple tools to find and put together the entire graphical structure of an application. Uh, when, you, when you're tying it like we do, we're, we're looking for the API, how it's tied to methods, how it's tied to the database. So if you're migrating a database, wouldn't it be great to understand how the code interacts with the database, for instance? Again, that goes back to, am I gonna break something if, if I make changes or if I port this data, if I migrate this database? And I, and because of the use of all these tools, yeah, they can, they can, there's plenty of applications out there that will score, scan your source code and give you all kinds of information about your source code. But in source code, you could have one line of code where you compile it, it's pulling in all these shared libraries and all of a sudden the result is you have another 50,000 lines of code and new dependencies that were created that the source code never knew about. You can get some dependencies from APM tools that actually monitor applications but they're not continuously analyzing the dependencies of the code in that application, which is what CodeLogic does. Uh, so there are tools, your IDE carries some information about dependencies. So you can look at the IDE, you can scan your source code, you can get some information from an APM, you could have your own application or Python scripts that looks for things, but at CodeLogic, we're the only one, you could look at the entire structure uh, your, your entire software structure graphically in a single platform. And I think that's the real differentiator. Uh, and, and, and also the, you know, the scanning of the binaries and looking at what happens at the application runtime because dependencies are created, 15, 20% in many cases are created during these parts of the, of the process. How folks can you know, uh, try out this uh, platform? Uh, what is your price, pricing model? Uh, is there any test uh, or demo or beta that they can try out? Yeah, number one, they can go to our website and download a free trial. Uh, number two, they can stand up. We, we actually ha are standing up a sandbox so that people can not even have to install the software. They can go straight into the sandbox and use, use the, uh, the, the application itself. 
Brian, thank you so much for taking time out today and not only talk about the company, but also the larger problem that the software developer community faces and how Code Logic is trying to help that. And I would love to have you back on the show, uh, but I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Swap, thank you. We'd come back anytime.